Hi, Dr. Bones back again. I want to talk a little bit about atoms, molecules, and I wanted to start with the periodic table of elements. In fact, this Skelly, my buddy, has a joke, but we'll have to get to helium for that one. So, if you come over here, I've got my periodic table of elements. I'm going to go to the group over here. I actually, as a scientist, can remember all of the elements in this part of the table, and I used to remember these as well. By memory, I can write them all out, so. But I won't be needing to do that today, because here they are. All right, so alkali metal group, group 1A. Alkali and earth group, group 2A. One electron in the valent shell, two electrons in the valent shell. We'll be talking about the valent shell and so on shortly. Here we have a big block. We call this the transition metal block. They have various oxidation states, so you can put a variety of electrons in d orbitals. We'll be talking about s and p and d and so on, and there are f orbitals, and continuing with the alphabet, you would guess uh, other letters, and I'm going to, you decide if you want to study on those other letters. So I'm not going to tell you what the other letters are. And we have interesting groups over here. We have semi-metals. Silicon is a very important element in the computer industry. So you've got semi-metals and some other heavy metals over here. We've got lead and tin here, it's called stannous. And we've got the chalcogens, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and so on. And finally, the Nobel, uh, Nobel gas is not Nobel. I have several friends who have Nobel prizes, but uh, these are called Nobel gases. I guess I could get a Nobel Nobel Prize for being a nice guy, but uh, I don't know if I'll be getting the Nobel Prize. So, helium here has two electrons, and we'll be talking about its uh, closed shell and not wanting to bond with anything else. And let's go over to our friend, he uh, well, helium. I'll go to our friend Skelly, who has a joke on helium. Skelly, what is the joke you got for helium? Hey, Dr. Bones, what do you call a lady helium atom? I don't know. What do you call a lady helium atom? A shelium. Oh, gee. A shelium. All right. So, um, I didn't say his jokes were all that great. Yeah. Better than his usual jokes. All right. So, um, the shelium. All right. So, let's talk a little bit about the atom itself. What about atoms? We start with the helium, or excuse me, the uh, hydrogen atom, then we'll get the helium and so on. So, we're going to be building up our electronic structure. So let's start with something like this here. We'll call this the nucleus with the proton, with the nucleons, protons, and neutrons. Dr. Bones, what about the croutons? What about the croutons? Well, the croutons are good for salad, but there are no croutons in the, in the nucleus. So protons and neutrons, all right? Protons have a plus charge, neutrons are neutral charged. Now, on the outside or periphery of the atom, we've got the electrons, and they're flying about in space. In the old planetary model that I studied when I was a student, we thought they had trajectories that you could take a look at and see where the electron would be at a certain time. Not so. So what happens is you've got the nucleus, you've got electrons out in space somewhere, but you're not exactly sure where they are out in space. We kind of think of it as a fuzzy kind of atom here. So if you zoom in on this one, instead of the rounded shape here, let's imagine this is the atom. I don't know if you can zoom in a little bit closer. Here you've got the kind of funny looking outside. We're going to call this somewhere on there. We'll call this the electron density. There are electrons out in space, outside of the nucleus. We're not exactly sure where they are, all right? And you can talk about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and other interesting things based on our inability to determine where this electron is at any point in time, all right? So there's momentum and position and so on that we have to consider. So we can't really tell where the electron is. It's out there somewhere. So we talk about an electron density as opposed to the nucleus and orbiting electrons, okay? So no more planetary model. Here we have the 
nuclear model with the electron density. Electrons are out there somewhere in space, more likely to be at a certain point versus less likely to be at another point, okay? So we can talk more about that in another segment. Let's take a look at some of these atoms. We've got hydrogen. Hydrogen has a proton and it has one electron, all right? A plus charge and a minus charge. Unstable, doesn't exist as H. Exists as hydrogen molecules, H2, all right? So a hydrogen atom likes to hook up with another hydrogen atom. So we can imagine here we've got a hydrogen atom and another hydrogen atom. When we bring them together to form the molecule, what will happen is you will have a electron density pretty much in between, more so than outside of these two nuclei. And because of this, we're able to bring these two electrons and two protons together. There is a interatomic attraction, all right? So this proton is attracted to electron, to the electron on this atom. This proton is attracted to the electron on this atom. There is a, an attraction, plus and minus. Of course, there's also a repulsion, plus and plus and minus and minus. And we'll talk more about that in another, in another segment. So here we go. We've got the two atoms. They can come close together. Let's see what would happen. If they collide, they can collide elastically, meaning they can kind of bounce off each other. Or if they're in the right orientation, they can pretty much form, kind of difficult to do, form the molecule. If I do this enough times, let's see what we can do. Oops. Oh, come on, you can do it. And, ah, there you go. So you see, comes together, forms the molecule, starts to spin, and then it falls apart again. What you really need to do is you have a collision, forms the molecule, has too much energy to stay together, meaning it's wanting to vibrate apart, and what you do is you need to collide with another atom or molecule to stabilize it so that it can stay as an H2 molecule, okay? Try that one more time. Here we go. You ready? They collide. Will they form a molecule? This is good for hand-eye coordination. Oh, my goodness. One more try, and then on to the next segment. Oh, try again. One more try. Here we go. You ready? Ah, good enough. See you in the next segment, The Dr. Bone Show.